So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the amazing magic, the digital dexterity of Michael Rubenstein. Hey. Hey, old boy. It is so great to be here tonight. I am so excited to be here tonight because tonight I get to present a classic of coin magic. And I get to, to do so with two amazing assistants. On my right I have... Courtney. Courtney, really? That's my wife's name. Hi. Hi. And on my left I have... Peter. Peter, really? That's my wife's name. Hi. <laughs> so the trick that I'm going to do for you guys tonight has been around for a long, long time. In fact, I've been able to trace this trick all the way back to Jesus, Montero, Belleville, New Jersey. <laughs> and it is said that after he performed this trick, he was burned at the stake. House where he was eating, the plate was too hot. <laughs> so, so a classic of coin magic, and for this, I just need to borrow from you guys four 1968 silver half dollars. You guys have? Uh, see, I had the four half dollars, but I exchanged them for 200 pennies. I knew I shouldn't have, but at the time, it made a lot of sense. <laughs> but, but hey, no problem. Magicians always have coins hanging around. You just got to know how to find them. Now, the first coin is easy to find. You see, whenever magicians perform, they wear their hearts on their sleeves. But I'm a little different. When I perform, I wear a coin on my sleeves. And there's the first coin. Of course, I just told everybody that magicians really do use their sleeves. Secrets out. But I bet my friend that I could find the second coin without using my sleeves. He told me to put my money where my mouth is, so I did. And there's the second coin. Hope this coin's feeling better, though, because before it was feeling a bit down in the mouth. <laughs> hey, I don't go for the laugh. I go for the groan. The bigger, the better. That, that's why I, I only work for grown-ups. Now, now, the third coin's around here somewhere. Let me see. Oh, wait, wait. Don't move, because I see it right over here. In your ear. And there's the third coin. Now, be honest. That was a little bit eerie, wasn't it? Oh, I know, I know. But hey, this is a celebrity coin. It is. No, in fact, this coin was just named Coin of the Year. Hey. And hey, look, now it's got a great wax shine. But hey, that's the third coin. The fourth coin I keep in a place that's certainly nothing to sneeze at. Because I got it right over here in my nose. Now, how long has that been in there? Who knows? But I could, I could breathe better now. That's because I used the decoin gestant. <laughs> Now, probably not the best time to say this after pulling that out of my nose, but hey, feel free to check them out. Make sure there are no trap doors, secret assistants, pieces of chocolate. That's great. That's amazing. This is like an episode of CSI, Coin Scrutiny Investigation. But we're going to use these coins to do something that I call the impossible four coin trick. And I call it that for two reasons. For one thing, it uses four coins. But I'm going to do this for you guys four times. The first time I do this trick, you're going to be surprised. The second time I do this trick, you're going to be bewildered. The third time I do this trick, you're going to be amazed. But the fourth time I do this trick, you're going to say that it's impossible. Now, would you be surprised to know that if I shake my hand just like this, the first coin vanishes? Well, it really doesn't vanish. It just travels over to here. Now, that's the first coin. And a bit of a surprise, right? I know I got goosebumps. But what's more than a surprise, what's bewildering, is that if I close both hands and I give them a shake, the second coin travels across just like that. Now, it's bewildering because the coin starts here and it travels all the way over here, but you can't see the coin go. That's because it goes by magic. But if you listen very carefully, even if you can't see it go, what's amazing is that you could hear it arrive. Watch. There it goes. Listen. You hear that? And the third coin goes right across. Thank you. Now, so far, you've been surprised, perhaps bewildered, and maybe even amazed. But that's not the name of this trick. Oh, no. I call this the impossible four coin trick, and I call it that for a reason. How many coins, Peter, are on the table? One. And Courtney, how many coins do you see in my hand? Three. I'd like you to give me your right hand palm up. I'm going to give you my three coins to hold. I want you to close your hand over them and turn your hand palm down, holding them really tight, as if Peter's life hung in the balance, OK? I think we can trust her. Close your hand over the coins, turn your hand palm down. Perfect. I think you're OK. I'm going to take this coin and hold it in my hand, as if my life hung in the balance, which it kind of does, because if this trick doesn't work, I'm going to die on stage. <laughs> now, do me a favor. Hold your hand up just a little bit higher. Perfect. Remember, you have three, and I have one. Now, try not to blink, because we all know that the hand can always fool the eye, sometimes the nose, and occasionally even the mouth. But it never, ever can fool the eyes of an entire audience who have been burning my hand like a laser beam since we started this trick, which is why, under test conditions, it would be impossible for my coin to vanish. Oh, no. <laughs> Courtney, do you remember how many coins they placed into your hand? I'd like you to place them on the table one at a time, and Peter, you count for her as she does so. One. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I 
you can't count that, it's not on the table. <laughs> Two, three. And the one on the floor? Four. The impossible four coin trick. Thank you. Yeah. And we are just getting.